The so Reds, significant ins and outs, Kagi. Uh, not a lot of ins, but there's one that we wanted to mention. Uh, Tom Liner. Um, I mean, if you've seen anything of Lewis Liner, absolutely lighting up the English Premiership rugby. Tom Liner, um, very much in the same vein. He's uh, the main position he's playing is is fly half these days. Yeah, so he, he'll be the backup, you assume, more than likely for James O'Connor. Very young. They, they might try and fill someone in. I, I, don't, think, I don't think you will, mate. I, th- I think Amy Stewart will be the backup. Yeah, I don't think we'll see yeah, look, uh, sorry, he, any game time out of him. But He, he um, won't come into a starting side. He actually might come into a bench bench role. Maybe, he, yeah, maybe sorry, Hamish Stewart would maybe. definitely feel the, the starting role. Yeah. Yeah. But the uh, the notable outs, uh, Brandon Pyinger and Mosa, has head off to France to Montpellier. Yeah. Um, Bryce Hegarty, who was pretty pretty locked in at 15. I, th- I think he's a bigger loss than they than most people give him credit for as well. Look, he, he was a great player. He was just stock standard and, for me, boring. But um, no, he played a fantastic and really important role for the Reds, uh, being that seasoned head. Um, so it will be interesting to see how they replace that. That's probably one of the key questions we're going to get to. Um, and otherwise, the other key out, uh, Ben Grant. And who highlighted that? But that's not a key. Mate, so. mate, he's, he wasn't a big loss. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, all that, right. Yeah. Let's um, let's get into the starting 15. So um, interesting one from, oh, we've got Dave Fio Fotowika, um in the front row. Mm. He, look, I mean, they've got three pretty good loose heads, Dane Zander and also Harry Hoopert. Um, who've shared a lot of game time, but he probably shone the most last year. Can we start? Well, yeah, Fort took his took his time to get into that role. I think for for the loose head role for for the Reds, and, and it has really evolved into for me back end of last year their first choice. Yeah. This definitely could be a rotational thing between between these three guys, but for me, I, I, I see him as this starter. He he is a a very big body. I think he's a very physical player in that loose head role, but there's there's a lot there. Yep, um, we've got Alex Murphy, who could be one of the biggest winners of the 2022 season. Absolutely. With, uh, with definitely attack. rising. Spoiler. Look, uh, I'd be, Spoiler. Yeah, I'd be he was, he was one of those guys where last year, um, even though he was more often than not the bench hooker, he remained in a lot of fantasy teams because he would come on and still score like three tries <laughs> in the second half. So the man knows how to find the try line, that is for sure. The only down for him is definitely his size when we're talking at least international level, 177 centimetres, 107 kilos. But the last few years between Brendan Panga, Mozart and him, they have actually rotated significantly the last three or four years. I think he is potentially a more skilled player. He's not as large, as large, as big a body, but if he gets his time in the saddle, I think he could definitely be a Wallabies bowl. I'm about 107 kilos, so a bit heavier than what they got there. But yep. hey, uh, Kagi, quick question. Noss yep. Lonigan or Alex Murphy, who wins ever a race, 20 metre? 20 metres. Only one's got the name Noss. Oh, I'm still going to go Noss. I'm going to go Billy Pollard. I'm pretty sure Murphy won like the fastest over 20 for the whole red side, but let's keep going. Look, his name's Noss Lonigan. Um, uh, a guy, look, we could talk about him for the next 10 years as well. Taniela Tupo going to continue Ooh. playing uh, just 80 minutes of every game. So it, it, even though I would like to see Zane Nongor play uh, play somewhere and get some game time, a very exciting young apprentice. Um, I mean, you just can't take Tupo off the field. He, he's the best. Yeah. So huge front row. Uh, and I think... Even though they were fine rotating Murphy and BPA a lot, I think just the consistency is going to be real good. Uh, the locks, we've got Ryan Smith. Uh, it'll kind of be Ryan Smith or Angus Blythe. We think that'll be, that's a key question, some of their um, yep. uh, contest. And uh, Lukan Salakai Lotto, definitely in lock there. Um, one of the best locks in Super Rugby uh, Pacific. He just absolutely yeah. dominates. Mm-hmm. And Nels, why don't you take us through the starting back row? Obviously, look on Tiger Lotto has got an option to cover the back row as well, but more than likely we'll see Liam Wright, Fraser McWright, who will have a breakout season for me potentially in terms of getting some good time for the Wallabies, hopefully, and Harry Wilson, you'd assume similar, getting some good it's, time. I know it's been Wallabies. almost a year, but is he still better than Michael Hooper uh, for you guys? Was he going to be? I'm uh, pretty sure both of you said. He's oh, I think he's the future. Out, so yeah, I, I mean, he's the future because Hooper like, right, can't play forever. That's. I think we all agree Michael Hooper was freaking unbelievable. Maybe he can. Year. Maybe Hooper can play forever. Nelson, <laughs> I don't know. You're not wrong. Yeah, you're not yeah, wrong. But potentially. He showed that this year. But if we then jump across, <laughs> Tate McDermott, James O'Connor, no real arguing that that Penner in that potential in the halves and, and pairing in the halves. We'll go Hamish Stewart as the 12. Maybe we see some changes there, but probably not. And Hunter Plysami in the 13 jersey. He could also fill that 12 role. 
And to round it out, we got Suliasi Bonavalu on the left wing, Filippo Dungunu on the right wing, and we're going to pick Jordan Pattaya, the man that the Wallabies keep calling for at number 15 to hold that 15 down, <coughs> excuse me, jersey down pat. Obviously, there's some competition there from Jock Campbell, but I think the Wallabies pressure and uh, and interest in him will probably give him the nod. Oh, I am there back three that excites you more than that. Suliasi oh, Mavalu, Filippo Dungunu, and Jordan Bataille. I could, I could show you the Crusaders back three, but let's not play that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, look, <clears throat> let's just say there's not in this this podcast. Um, let's there's... have Fanger, Anuku, Severi Reese, no, and Will okay. Jordan. Wrong, no, wrong one. I'm sorry, sorry. Come on, mate. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Now, look, that, we... is, that is, let's get to the key no, questions. No, no. And, and that is the, one of the big key questions is look, who, who will wear the 15 jersey the most this season? So we just said. The the, um, tri- the trickiest thing is oh, I I do think we see teething issues for Pattaya and that fullback jersey, but I, I to his me whole, his whole game is teething issues, mate. It doesn't matter. You're not wrong. The highlights are real. You're not wrong. Look, I I, I think we see some teething issues, but he'll get a good good crack there. Campbell and Macarelli are a lot of options there. Um, Thorny loves Hamish Stewart in the centres. Is do we see anyone else taking that jersey from him throughout the year? Uh, I, look, I did. I really like the looks of Isaac Henry. Uh, and I think that could be an interesting pairing, having Isaac Henry at 12, Hunter Paisami at 13. Uh, I'm not sure whether we'll see it eventually. Thorn, as you said, Thorne loves Hamish Stewart. Um, yeah, I, think, I think Hamish Stewart's a fantastic bench option because he can cover 10 and 12. But, um, but otherwise, what I mean, what I'd like to see, Paisami has been absolutely tearing it up at 12 for the Wallabies. He's been tearing up other international mm-hmm. sides, including the All Blacks, giving it to them. Uh, so I wouldn't mind seeing him there, but uh, that means you're looking at a, 12 Paisami, 13. I mean, you could have Isaac Henry, but or you could have Jordan Bataille there at 13. Yeah, I think I think that's the problem, right? Like Isaac Henry, Hamish Stewart, they're not 13s. I, I think I yeah. think both of them should play inside center. So if you do push Paisami there, you really limit your options in the side. Fluke. Um, Fluke, Fluke. Fluke is another option outside center, absolutely. So there are some questions, but my gut feeling is his first choice has always been Hamish Stewart. Paisami mm. at outside center. So that's probably what we'll see, particularly Look, with the push, particularly with the push for Pattaya to 15. Uh, I, I really like Kagi's side, but I think we're going to see a significant investment in uh, Pattaya at fullback. I, I think it's time. Uh, there's been so much talk about it. Yes, he's swifted, switched between different positions, but yeah, I think he's going to be fullback this year. And Mac Greeley, mate, he's the other name that we haven't mentioned. Oh. Jeez, he's a freak. So excited about this guy. My, my gut feel is he's probably a year or two away from getting a lot of game time, but a couple of injuries, he could be anything. Look, I mean, he, yes, we say he's a year or two away, but he's 19 now, so he'll be turning 20 throughout next season. Just give the guy to the Tars. Because if you're, if you're investing in Batara at fullback, give him to the Tars, give him to the Force, let this man get some bulk minutes there. Reds, you're selfish. You've got too many good players. Ryan Smith versus Angus Blythe, Kagi. Who locks down the second row spot for the bulk of the year? And would you pick one of them, or do you think it's just too much of a line call? Look, I've, I've been equal, I have been equally impressed by both of them, so probably a line call. I think uh, Angus Blythe started off the year last year, and I thought he was actually very good, and then Ryan Smith uh, carried it out towards the back end. Um, I think it'll be the same thing. It'll really be just a rotation uh, of workload. Um, yeah. They, they'll, look, I think they'll both get a chance throughout the season. I, I was a huge fan of Angus Blythe in 2020, but I think Ryan Smith took over him, so I think he gets the first shout there. Um, but do we think Kagi? Oh, no, let's go Harry. Do we think this rotation policy, they have too many good players, do we think this will be negative in terms of them throughout the 2022 season? I think we're talking about the back row here as well. No, we're talking about everything. I'm talking about their entire team when I talk about this question, <laughs> yeah. mate. There's so much depth in terms of pretty much every position across. Maybe the front row, not so much, but I think everywhere else, there's a lot of questions about how do you get people into the team that are just on the uh, the uh, the fringes. And I don't think it will hurt them. I think it's actually going to be massively beneficial. I, I remember hearing... Uh, in Rev's podcast um, that uh, they use roughly 38 players per year. So the depth that they need will probably be used. And uh, so I, don't, I think it'll actually be a very good thing for them that they can do that. Crusaders have had the similar problem. Pretty much every New Zealand side has had that problem for every year and it hasn't hurt them. So, no, I, I don't think it will hurt them. I think it'll just be where you use the opportunity and if they can find the right time to do that. Yep. And I, I think more than, more than ever, there's probably a few sides this year that you can do that. So, no, I don't think it will hurt them. Oh, and I just wanted to say, when I was saying specifically the back row, I mean... Um, 
they have, you know, uh, Brad Thorne really loves Angus Scott Young and we all exactly. loved um, Sarah Uru last year was absolutely incredible. So it's yeah, interesting, with, it's interesting yeah. with you. Now you can't, who do you sit? You can't sit out Liam Wright and Fraser McWright, can you? Um, and interestingly, do we think, um, does Liam Wright just go straight back in as captain uh, again this year? I don't know, but but obviously Liam Wright can push to seven. They can use Angus Scott Young at six and keep blooding Fraser McWright a little bit as well. But no, I don't think it's that clear cut, but let, let, let's push, guys. Let's push. Yep. Stocks rising. I had Alex Murphy, Jordi Pattaya, and Suliasi Vunavalu. Um, my big point for this one was Vunavalu's top scores last year were 66, 59, and 44. For a bloke that didn't get a lot of game time, I think that he could be like absolutely anything in he, the outside backs. He was, he's a freak. He, he's a proper freak. NRL's chop Skype try scorer a couple of years ago. Jesus Christ, he could be anything. Seriously dynamic, exciting. He did some amazing things this small amount of time. Jordi Pattaya, absolute freak, so he, he could do anything. Murphy, we've already touched on. Jock Campbell, we've got down as our stock's falling. It hurts me to say because I'm a big fan of him and he'd probably start Waratahs for the, should pick him. That's yeah, and, and he would start for the Waratahs, which is the next thing I was going to say. But, look, there's just a lot of competition. If they're investing in Pattaya, it's going to hurt him. Um, Kagi, you want to take us to the Smokies? Smokies, uh, Isaac Henry talked about him earlier, just saying that um, of the little we saw of him, I really liked him there in the 12 jersey. I think Harry nailed on in the head. He's not a 13, so it's just if he um, if they experiment a little bit with him at 12 instead of Hamish Stewart. Harry Hooper, we talked about Dave Fio Fotowiga probably being number one, being up there. I mean, Dane Zander was also great. But we've talked about Harry Hooper. We've talked him up the last couple of years, just saying we really see a lot of potential in him there. Particularly, uh, he nails the set pace, but he's also really good around the probably the best on park running the ball and um, yeah. things like that. So, if if he's in condition um, and you know can get some game time, he could be anything as well. Yeah, absolutely. And Mac really, Nelson just frosts on Mac really. I think we all do. I think he's just a young, exciting talent. It reminds me a lot of Mac Hansen, and he's just sheer excitement and running ability. I hope he doesn't go to Ireland as well. Have we done any research? Has he got any Irish relatives? Uh, I hope not. But let's, uh, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's like a Tyrone Green type mold, isn't he? He's just. He uh, is, yeah. Far out. Right. So, yeah. there's, there's another name that you got to absolutely love. And hmm. anyway, we, 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 won't, uh, we won't dwell on the South Africans. They were, they were kicked out of the comp. So uh, <laughs> we right. love watching them, but no more. No more. No more.